Austin, I'll start with you on this one because you've been a part of a number of very big shows out there. Mm -hmm. Which one of those experiences would you say taught you the most about co-headlining your own series? Um, I did this, um, <laughs> it's probably the one thing that, I mean, obviously no one has watched cause it never got picked up, but I did this, uh, I did this pilot for, um, the show called less than zero. It's based off of, um, the Brady Snellis book. And, um, then I was, I was claying that and I was like super helpful teacher for like what it was like to do to lead like a television show, even though I only led one episode. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. So no one's, no one's seen that, but uh, that was probably, at least for me personally, the, the one that uh, was like most helpful in that way. I hear you. Things happen for a reason and it paved the way to this. Midori, yeah, yeah. I was stalking your Instagram the other day and I saw <laughs> that post you did and I was just taken by how just sweet, sincere and honest it was. And I do think there is great value in talking about some of the bumps in the road. And you had written that you had a hard day sometimes and maybe sometimes mm. you didn't quite show up. So ah, what yes. or who was it that helped you get over those moments and uh, forge mm. forward with the process? I see. So this is what they say about everything you write becomes a new story. I see now. Um, yeah. So by that, I meant that, you know, you uh, gosh, when you're an actor and you're working 17 hours a day sometimes and you're frustrated with yourself or you're, you know, trying to make this the best it can be, um, you can sometimes lose sight of the joy and the gratitude. And so by that, I simply meant that you know, I'm super hard on myself, as is, as are a lot of people. And I think um, looking back at the experience, you can always find times when you're like, oh, man, I, you know, I, I didn't really, uh, um, I could have appreciated that day more. But I'm going to pivot now and say <laughs> that um, I feel like, I feel like those days are actually like really essential to the whole process, right? Like, it's, it's you're making a painting and like every day is a different stroke and like they're not all going to be beautiful and they're not all going to make sense. But um, we're playing human beings and they're messy and they're complicated and they make mistakes. So if it's all it's all good. Less a news story and more something that I think could really make a difference for someone out there if they're in that situation and need to yeah. hear it from someone they admire from a show. So I appreciate you sharing that. Another thing that crossed my mind reading that post that I think you'll you'll have a good answer to, and Austin, feel free to, feel free to chime in here as well. I often ask, who is the unsung hero of a production? We know you guys. We know the directors, the writers. Oh, the it's show. not us. Yeah. Who's someone that contributed yeah. just a little something along the way that you think people need to recognize more? God, I mean, my dresser, Olivia, she was like... It's so funny, like you can be so self-absorbed with what you're doing because you have, you know, you're memorizing your lines and you're focusing on what you're doing, but you forget everybody is doing a job. And she was just always there for me if I was cold, if, if my shirt was tucked in improperly, but she became more than that. She became my friend and like I could always turn to her and it, it, it so much so that one day actually Austin, you took her from me for one of the shoots, I think she went with you. And that whole day I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do without Olivia. But um, I, I truly like, I look back at that process and I just think of my dresser, Olivia, she was like the best. I bet for you, Austin, anyone come to mind? I mean, I don't know. Uh, to me, I kind of like when you asked me that question, I just kind of thought of like the whole crew as a collective, like as a whole. Um, and especially like, um, I feel like the attitude that everyone has, like if everyone's like enjoying what they're doing and like what they're working on and also working with one another, it creates like, I mean, it's a huge difference compared to like if everyone is kind of like dreading what they're doing or not getting along with each other. Um, so it's almost like, I don't know, kind of the energy of the whole crew and like, um, although that's not really exactly answers your question of the unsung kind of hero. I like I, the unsung hero is, is everyone, you know, is, is everybody. I feel like the, the family vibe on a set can be really important. So that still answers the question there. Yeah, I mean, it, it matter, yeah, I mean, it matters just like the whole, that everyone just has a good attitude and it's just like, you know, enjoying themselves really.
makes all the difference. Yeah. I love the holiday spirit in the show, whether it's Christmas or any other holiday. What is the most unique holiday tradition you two have? There's Thanksgiving where you do the whole thing with the whole family and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if I have any like kind of weird, somewhat, I don't know, traditions that I could share. I mean, they're, they're all pretty, pretty vanilla in a way. How about you, Midori? Anything come to mind? Uh, well, yeah, we always sing Christmas carols at my Aunt Colleen's house. And then part of the tradition is that, well, as my aunt's lips get more stained with red wine, we then transition to Elton John's um, Tiny Dancer. And we've done it every single year since as long as I can remember. So it like starts with Jingle Bells and then we're all like, you know, singing Tiny Dancer. It's an eight o'clock <laughs> transition right there. <laughs> all right. Yeah. To wind this down, I am going to go into spoiler territory. We will put up the, the warning and save it for after the show comes out. Midori, mm -hmm. I cannot ask you, I cannot not ask you about your dance moves in episode three. Oh, yeah. Is any of that choreographed? And if not, where, like, what is kind of creating that style for her? Totally. So, oh my God, I was so nervous about this because I'm not a dancer and I truly am not just saying this, like I'm scared to dance in front of people. But um, the Joe who worked on, uh, Joe Tratz who worked on, worked on Be More Chill, um, he brought in some of his choreographers and they helped me with some of the moves, but they all started from like an organic place. So they would let me fool around. And I think, uh, I don't know, one time I just like started swinging my legs and I was like, do you guys like this? And they were like, yeah, we actually really like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I feel like under anybody else's direction, because uh, Pamela was directing that episode, anybody else might have uh, came in with some notes, but she and the choreographers were so open to it being as weird and as ugly as possible. I mean, one of the moves is literally me punching people. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it went from being a scary moment to truly like one of the best moments for me on set. As someone who can dance and is terrified to dance in front of people, that spoke to me, so I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, I had so many more, but I already got the wrap, so I gotta let you guys go. But again, huge congratulations on the show and thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Thank you, bye. bye.